Oh my God. Episode 50. We made it to 50. This is bananas. I can't believe we did it. Thank you so much for everyone who's been on board uh, for so long. This is episode 50 and uh, it's a very special episode. I'm very, very happy that we made it 50 and I'm very happy. I got uh, one of my best friends in the entire world on. Uh, my buddy Justin Gowell, uh, who I've mentioned countless times on the show, uh, he's in the one thing is uh, he's in remotely, so he he skyped in, so the connection uh, is uh, is there emotionally, but it's a little rickety uh, sound wise, so bear with us. But you know, once you get in there, you'll you're gonna have a great time. It's a great episode. I had so much fun talking to my buddy and and really grilling him. I really went after this dude as to what he has done to uh, deserve being my groomsman. I really put his feet to the flame. I put his fire to the feet. I did whatever you think I'm trying to say. <laughs> and it's a, I really grilled him. I think it's a great episode and I think you're going to really enjoy it. And I'm happy we're at 50 and I'm announcing right now, we're going to start a Patreon soon. We're going to do a Patreon soon. We'll give you a couple extra episodes a month that will be uh, very much like what we do here, but some a little different, maybe a little extra ASMR, maybe a little extra, maybe some stand-up clips uh, that I'm not going to put on YouTube or whatever, maybe some uh, some more questions. Maybe we're, we dig deeper with a couple more guests. Uh, maybe some other fun stuff along the way, but we're going to start a Patreon soon. I'm so excited to start rolling out that and start churning out some more tent. I, I love slinging tent. That's the name of the game, slinging content. Uh, if you want to come see me do some stand-up comedy, first off, uh, this is coming out on uh, the 9th. So uh, happy Yom Kippur to our Jewish friends. On the uh, the 11th, on Friday, October 11th, I'm at Country Club in Chicago, and I'm also at a live one in Chicago. Uh, both of those shows start at nine, and so but uh, luckily they're uh, close to each other, so I can do them both. So come out to uh, either one, or come out to both of those, and just follow me around. Hear me do the same jokes at two different locations. What a treat that would be for you. Ten twenty four. I'm at Alter Brewing out in Downers Grove. That's going to be a very fun uh, show at that brewery on the Bear Room at the Alter Brewery. Uh, Xavier Lamont XL, one of my good buddies and one of my favorite comics in the local scene, is on that show as well. It's going to be very fun. Come out to that if you're out in Downers. Uh, 1025, Holt, Michigan, uh, a suburb of Lansing. Come out. Uh, I don't know. I will have more information on that next week, but it's going to be great. I'm there with Lindsay Shaw, another Michigan comic, and uh, Matt Brown, who's one of my favorite, favorite uh, young up-and-coming uh, comics on the scene. And boy, oh, boy, he does um, makeup effortlessly and perfectly. He is... He is a very well made up young man and uh, come see us do comedy in, uh, in Holt, Michigan, uh, a team that my high school beat in uh, my senior year. We really took it to it. We'd beat Holt in the playoffs. We'd beat Lansing Everett in the playoffs. And we lost to Macomb, Dakota in the final four. Don't know why I decided to sl slip that in there, but there's some Detroit Catholic Central Shamrocks trivia for you. And then 1026, I'm at Blackout Diaries at Under the Gun Theater. Uh, that's a uh, friend of the show, Jonah Jerkins' uh, show. So come hang out with all of us. That'll be very fun. If you like the way my voice sounds on these microphones, check out some of the other Jazz Fuzz shows. Crushes with the great Deanna Ortiz, where she talks about celebrity crushes. And that time I got arrested with our good pal, B. Casper. That's the thing about B. Casper. She loves doing that show so, show so much. She refuses to stop getting arrested. It is costing her a fortune to churn out sweet, sweet content for you guys. So go check out all that stuff and check us out on the World Wide Web on all your social medias at the Mike O'Keefe at multiple idiots. Thank you so much. Thanks for getting me through to 50. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Let's go. It's episode 50 this week, so I thought I'd bring in uh, probably what I'd say one of the most talked about people in the history of the show, 
uh, one of my best friends in the entire world, Justin Gowell, who's been, uh, well, how long have we been together as, as buddies? Like, it's like a decade. We've been, we've, I guess we've been at it about 10 years now. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we met at a beautiful Michigan state university, the banks of the red Cedar river in a, an introduction to film class that, uh, we both slept through constantly. <laughs> oh God. Just, so many movies that uh, are just very, very dark and a very good spot to sleep. Well, really. he, here's what it is in the winter. And I, I've, I've started thinking about this more and I think it's a very Midwestern thing in the winter. If it's cold outside, but the room you're in is super warm, it puts you to sleep immediately. Yeah. We yeah. also have that. And we had the, like the post lunch, factor with that yeah. too because i want to say that was like maybe like a one o'clock yeah. class where it'd just be oh like we're watching a movie today and it's like all right i'm just gonna sit down and like maybe i stay away and it's like you know you just fall asleep within 20 minutes and, and yeah. you get the notes from some from cody of and course that's, fine. Yeah. that's exactly what happens <laughs> and you, uh, you smoke a little weed and you have some panda express and you enjoy wasting your parents money that's what you do <laughs> Skinny you, get, you, you know, you get a passing grade and, in, in, you know, intro to film and it means nothing. And, you know, you just, but you make a lifelong friend in yeah, the process. that's what you do. <laughs> you make a lifelong friend in, uh, in Justin Gowell and you make a lifelong friend in The Bicycle Thief. That's what you do. <laughs> I think there's some sort of mandate that every, because I took two more film classes. I think there was a mandate that you had to watch The Bicycle Thief in every film class. And uh, it turns oh, yeah, out it's just a really... movie about a guy stealing a fucking bicycle. It's not, yeah. it's nice. It's good. It's fantastic. I get that it's a really reinforcing some negative Italian stereotypes. I, uh, I find that. <laughs> if you're not like, lo- if you're not locking your bike up outside a ristorante, boy, is that thing going to get nicked? Oh, I tell you. Oh, boy, I hope it has no sentimental attachment, but uh, it will. Un- <laughs> assuredly it will. <laughs> Oh, officer, I lost my bike. Well, did you follow the trail of marinara sauce? (laughs) Step one. I'm I'm okay with this. I'm okay with you leaving this in, by the way. (laughs) Now, listen, the Irish and the Italians have had a decades, nay, centuries long feud, but only in the Americas. Over in Europe, everyone's fun. We all have the same money. Yeah. (laughs) All the same money. Uh, but we, we take this stupid, uh, this, dumb, it wasn't dumb. It was, it was a fine introduction to film class. Uh, <laughs> it was a, just a, it was fine. Uh, I was, I, we, yeah, was, here's the thing. We have a lot of incoming freshmen to college that listen to the show and I, I, we, any education they're going to get is going to be a great education. Just. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? Just, um, I, honestly, just take whatever you think you might like. And, uh, yeah, you just figure, you, yeah, you figure out stuff about yourself and that, that is that I fall asleep quickly. Also in classes when it's hot uh, and, <laughs> and I'm full of sandwich. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Uh, here's another one. Loft your beds, more floor space. Any sort of tips you have for incoming college freshmen, just throw them out. <laughs> uh, toaster oven. Everything tastes better in a toaster oven oh versus a microwave. God. Listen, the microwave is Hot a tip. sham. <laughs> the microwave is a sham. Speaking of ovens, remember uh, you came in for my birthday a couple of years ago, and uh, surprise, surprise, we had a couple uh, cocktails. And we were back at mine and Mal's apartment and I, Mal was making us a pizza because she is a saint. And I went over, (laughs) it was still cooking. It had only been in there for like a minute and a half. I went over there and just opened the door and walked away. (laughs) And Mal was like, what are you doing? I was like, I want it to get hot, but I don't want it to get too hot. So I left the (laughs) door. A great way to just fucking kill yourself and your girlfriend <laughs> and your buddy. <laughs> Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. I'm dead. <laughs> Died by the yeah, most, that was, the most um, ridiculous suicide at 28. Way to go. I, I mean, yeah, I uh, didn't really get the gravity of the situation. <laughs> I was probably just like it really just trying to not pass out and just wait yeah. for pizza so that I could fall asleep <laughs> at the moment. Didn't really grasp that at all. But, um, yeah, in retrospect, like, yeah, harrowing. You're a man, um, you're a man of priorities. Everyone says that about you. <laughs> <laughs> the 
people do say that. No. <laughs> Uh, but then the the next year uh, we start writing for the Black Sheep together, and that's when that's when we started our tryst that has lasted nary a decade. And uh, that's true. It it is it is strange to think that uh, this this, uh, this this pal of mine in my film my uh, intro to film class. Little did I know that like maybe. 13 months from yeah. uh, that class, we would be sharing an apartment that neither of us <laughs> were on the lease for. Well, yeah, we had uh, <laughs> <laughs> the most insane thing ever. We had, we had these, these girlfriends <laughs> who is now your wife, which is, yeah. that's it. Yeah. That's the only thing that's a little bit more astounding than that is that, but that's <laughs> is that we shared an apartment the three of us and then kind of the four of us. And then you, one of those couples got married. That's insane. Statistically. There's a baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a baby too. <laughs> the fruits, yeah. There's fruits of that relationship. <laughs> Crazy. So, so basically we didn't, I didn't have a house for the summer and Justin was between places, but our girlfriends were roommates and my girlfriend was in uh, New Jersey for some sort of internship that eventually went tits up and she moved back. Uh, so I was in her room uh, sleeping alone. And if you ever want to, you know, be a complete weirdo, uh, have a girl that you've been dating for six months, go out of town and then sleep in her bed alone when you don't live together. Just looking back, what a crazy thing that I was allowed to do. <laughs> Like that's funny. Said it aloud, it sounds weird, but like uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the time, it made sense, though, right? I was like, oh, I'll oh yeah, yeah. Do, well, yeah I mean, we're uh, we're gonna just uh, I don't know, write write jokes and watch playoff hockey, and yeah. you know, just drink a lot of uh, light beer every day, and and we did all those things, and we, it was great. <laughs> we did all those things. Yeah, we have. I I'd say I think once we start, we we'll get the Patreon coming up. I think we're gonna do a live reading of the pilot that we wrote, called, which is called oh, Livins. Oh boy. <laughs> and uh, boy, oh boy, I, let's see if any of that holds up. I can't wait. Ooh, I am, uh, <laughs> you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, I, I, like anything you've written 10 years ago, it's going to be mostly painful. There'll be one or two things that you're like, you know, don't completely hate, but I, you're like, Oh, that's not bad. I could have done that a little better, but it's not bad. Like I, I but a lot I, of it's going to be like, Oh, this is just a big cringe. Uh, I don't, I think, I think there's probably going to be a couple uh once overs before we actually do that, but uh, it'll happen. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> just for a pure just shock and uh, and, and self loathing factor just to do it like completely fresh. <laughs> I, I think we'll uh, I think we'll uh, take a fine tooth comb through some of that stuff. Okay, that that, that sounds good. Just um. but th so that was a double announcement. We're gonna start we're gonna start the Patreon up very shortly. So if you're listening to this and you're enjoying the show, please give me some money every month. I really appreciate it. But. <laughs> Justin, I didn't just I didn't just call you on this just a goof and gaff, which is something we've done every day. I came here because I have a goal. I have something I need. I need friggin' groomsmen, sweet baby J. I need to I audition know. some baloney boys. I'm I'm so as we said right now, zero for forty nine. Literally zero for forty nine. That's that's Man. that is a scoreboard when Michigan State. Plays a team from the MAC conference. Actually, that's 100% not true. We'd win by like, we win by like two touchdowns. We squeak it out. Yeah. Squeak, it it's, out. It's, 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 yeah. squeak everything out. <laughs> Fucking most frustrating thing. God damn it. Those pieces of shit. I love them. You're, you're great. You're fantastic. Enjoy know, we, the intro to film this year, boys. Uh, <laughs> Scoon over if you're still there. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Schoonover is uh, – we don't need to talk about Carl Schoonover. <laughs> yeah. What if he has uh, a weird Google vendetta look? against – was a weird vendetta against Jennifer Connolly. Really couldn't stand her. Uh, yeah, I think they went I, to high school together. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like a 35 year old, like 35, 40 year old guy. It's just holding grudges. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hate this beautiful, successful woman. Oh. <laughs> anyway, it's time to get down to the nits grits. Time to get down to the nitty gritty and see if you. Justin Maurice Gow. I know that's your middle name, but I think it'd be fun. I think your middle name's Maurice okay. now. Yeah, we'll go with it. To okay. see you, I'm Justin good. Maurice Gow, if you're going to be what am I? Baloney boys, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay.
Number one, plan my bachelor party. Before we get going, there's three things I got to lay down for you. Number one, money is not an issue. It's not anything financially we can make it happen. Unlimited cha-ching dollars. Number two, I've heard of money before. I don't call them cha-ching dollars. I know they're called dollars. (laughs) Number two, (laughs) logistics, travel, getting people from point A to point B. uh, Also not an issue. We can go anywhere. We can do anything. All that stuff, very feasible. Number three, whether or not I will enjoy it, also not an issue. Okay. Proceed. Sounds good. (laughs) Go for it. So we would uh, start off in Chicago. Um, under the, under, um, we'd start off going to sensory deprivation chambers with, uh, a gang of, I assume, I don't know, 10 or 15 of us. Okay. Um, we would go there, we'd get in, get in these chambers, um, have our, our senses deprivated for, uh, um, you know, an hour, <laughs> an hour. But then when we come out of them, these chambers have been moved to, a sort of riverboat casino, Ooh, but okay. there's, there's more that, um, all of our clothes and all of our phones have all also been switched out for mm, garb from like the 1800s. So uh, none of us are actually really sure. We're also somewhere in Lake Michigan at this point too. So now we're just on this riverboat casino, seemingly having traveled back in time, um, nobody really knows what's going on at this point. Um, we're, we're sailing around for a while. Um, there's, you know, uh, a lot of different, uh, bathtub gins and other just, uh, you know, pro prohibition fair, um, that, that might be on this boat. You know, we're, we're kind of taking liberties with history right now. But, it's, it's very um, of the time you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're sailing around. Um, some people might be panicking, but like, you know, like <laughs> we um, might be. Also, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Do you think riverboat casinos have sails? Riverboat casinos. No, you, no, I'm picturing like sailing a big, like, around like, twice. And I'm like sailing. We got a fucking sailing. We got no, that no, no, big like, wheel in the back. Yeah, I, I should have steaming around. Steaming um, around. You know, just like. Uh, fair, <laughs> fair, very fair, very fair. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. Liberties right. with uh, the the maritime. Uh, I understand. Terms. I understand. <laughs> but um, so yeah, we're basically going um, around Lake Michigan and to, uh, maybe give it like a day of just uh, you know really nobody's really sure what what's happening, <laughs> in, including you. Um, and um, <laughs> and um, eventually we do make it back to. Um, uh, oh no! We just we end up sailing off to basically someone's cottage, um, where we just drink beers and uh, float down the river on inner tubes, and then have to take a very very slow um, paddle steam. Sorry, <laughs> back back to Chicago. Um, <laughs> paddle steam. That's that's the that's the right word. I think. I think paddle uh, steam is how they are propelled through the water. Yeah, it's a yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I I think it I think it'd be fine. Um, it'd be very very feasible. Like, it would be fine. <laughs> what a glowing! Movie. It would be fine. I guess. It'd be, it'd like. be a- appropriate. Just to, <laughs> I have I have a couple I have a couple questions, and I think everyone has these same questions. Number one, the currency on the ship is that current ching, money that we're. Oh, sorry. The cha-ching dollar buckaroos that were... <laughs> cha-ching! Uh, that's a cash <laughs> register. Don't at me. Um, the Put Patreon. <laughs> yeah, that's my... That's my. Yeah, it's the Patreon that will... I'll probably get around to it in the next couple of weeks, I, I hope. I got a lot, I got a lot on my plate. Uh, <laughs> namely this pizza. So... <laughs> <laughs> so the money that the cha-ching buckaroo dollar bills that we're using, is that like phony 1800s money or is that today money? Oh, um, it's, it's like, uh, no, it would be 1800s money. Okay. All, all of our, um, all of our wallets and 
phones and um, all of our outfits would be replaced kind of like a almost like I'm picturing like like opening scene of like Westworld oh, where like instead yes, of a West wallet West you West. just have like a clip of like Confederate money mm. or like you know like like something like like that where instead of um I don't know instead of a phone you just have like a compass in your pocket. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. A compass that I can use to walk around the boat I'm on. Sounds great. Oh, no, no. Just one to draw circles. <laughs> oh. Like just... <laughs> oh, like a math class compass. Very tight. <laughs> and if we lose enough money instead of beating us up, <laughs> they'll, just jam, each other with those compasses. they'll jam the <laughs> compass into the top of a guy's head and draw a circle around his head. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Fantastic. Let me, this is another question. Where do we, when we get, when we wake up on the riverboat after our senses have been deprivated, where do we think we are? Like what? I know we're in the 1800s, but what geographical location? Can I uh, use my awesome Southern accent? That's my question. Oh, 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 Georgia O'Keefe. Yes, yeah. please. Um, <laughs> I did have. I had a. I had a. I had an alter ego in in college. It was Georgia O'Keefe, and I got. I'll say. I'll say. I paint a vagina like a flower. That was what I did. Uh, well, I think that's great. Um, I think it's fantastic. I'm a big fan. Yeah, of this. No, no, no. So, so when we oh. wake up, we do think we are. We we think we're still at the sensory deprivation place yeah and then as soon as we walk out of the room it is very apparent we are um we are on a, like the riverboat state room um, love it do i mm-hmm. get to shoot a man in the chest oh. and watch I mean, him we, die I, I i suppose we could sail it anywhere uh, <laughs> we wanted to you know we got to international waters but, Great. Um, yeah <laughs> Great. i love it I love you it. Get you get married to any number of things. I um. love it. I we're gonna go to international waters, and I am uh, I'm going to kill the oldest person on the boat. That's uh, that's gonna happen. <laughs> Justin, I think that's a fantastic bachelor party. It sounds lovely. But while Can't this wait. is while this is happening, I don't want Mal bothering us. So <laughs> with the same rules, plan her bachelorette party so she doesn't bug us. I gotta go hmm. Home Depot. Come Home Depot with me. No, I'm going back in time. <laughs> um, hmm. I think, uh, I think also like, uh, depriving people of knowing what time it is, is probably a good, uh, jumping off point for any party. Um, because you know, <laughs> um, so I think maybe, yeah, probably either sensory deprivation or something like where, yeah, people are just in in a room for longer and disoriented. Um, for the mound, her her ladies, um, uh, probably something like that. Um, and then from there, I'm trying to think what would be. Hmm. Great radio. Yeah, perfect, yeah. Perfect, perfect radio. <laughs> How about we just keep them in the damn tank? That's a, <laughs> I don't like that. Like oh, that. just like, like, no, that sounds way too there. Yeah, that sounds horrible. <laughs> they, come, they come out and they're actually just, just not the people what? that yeah, we've ever met. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, they're like, oh, I think that's um, what it would be like if we went to space and we didn't like it. <laughs> I think I think something like that, but um, I know Mal really likes um, big big fan of magicians, <laughs> so I think something that would be um, like a scavenger hunt, but with uh, where you're basically going to places, magicians are giving you clues. Um, there's of course like alcohol and um, oh delicious uh, delicious food involved. Something it. something like that where it's all around Chicago, but also you're yeah you're disoriented. Um, they're uh, um, kind of traveling around and all goofed up. <laughs> you, you like to kind of you like to kind of break everyone down to even. <laughs> like with this sensory that's, deprivation that's good... thing, it's really the ultimate equalizer. You know what I mean? Oh, it is. <laughs> well, it's just it's um it's a part like again because like, when you get out of it, it's pretty much like you kind of just have to um I don't know like acclimate yourself again to like people and like walking around and stuff like that. So I think something like that would be, everybody would kind of be a little bit out of their element. And I think being like at a, um, 
magic show or with magicians would be pretty fun. <laughs> so few people's <laughs> element is a magic show. And it's mostly magicians. Well, and magicians' assistants. And sp- hmm. And very, very specific bartenders. Uh, that's a great answer, though. <laughs> I love both of those. You're you're rolling so far. You're getting after it. I appreciate, I appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> getting after it. Next question. Uh, Justin, when it comes to the reception, what are your DJ mm-hmm. no-nos and your DJ yes-pleases? Well, I mean, as uh, the listener of the show, I have... Uh, uh, I am aware that uh, a band is is the uh, the appropriate. Oh, response. there you go. Uh, Great work. Um, Great work. I mean, it's yeah. It's, Still uh, answer the question. And, and, Come and on, what are you doing? Like the <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, good energy. Honestly, anything, anything Motown, any songs that like everybody is going to know. Yeah. So I'd say Motown. Yes. I would say anything that was like, mm, like. 2000 to 2004 like things you would have heard at like a homecoming dance kind of like yeah. uh top 40 stuff um things that basically people are not going to get off the dance floor for where it's like um no 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 i have to dance to the song and then the next song comes on they're like no 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 i can't get a drink yet i'm gonna have to dance to this one too um I think no knows um, really just make sure that the band isn't Aerosmith because <laughs> we've talked many nobody times. likes Aerosmith. We've talked many times. Aerosmith <laughs> sucks, dude. <laughs> sucks. They're a bummer. Just, They're yeah, a bummer. Just, just really, really check um, all the fine print to make sure that the band you're hiring isn't Aerosmith. <laughs> yeah. Just really go through the fine tooth and be like, okay, <laughs> yeah, do yeah. you guys like, have a to- roller coaster named after you? <laughs> <laughs> I might try to sneak this in, um, you know, just, just really, you know, they're hurt, into play. They're hurting for gigs. They need to get out there. They're the hardest <laughs> working band in America. <laughs> so yeah, that'd be my, my, yeah, that's my no, no. And yes, please. And do it. Here's my thing with Aerosmith. Uh, Tell me. that's the only, like they're mentioning, like them being mentioned is literally the only thing I don't like about the movie dazed and confused. Yeah, like I really wish they were band. going to buy better tickets. Yeah, man, and, and it's not like it could be rush. I don't know, fucking bread. I don't give a shit. Just the traffic. Yeah, traffic. Any, anybody from like Chicago. Yeah. I don't know any band with yeah. one word in, for their name. <laughs> yeah, now Aerosmith just uh, it's. One of the few uh, bones I have to pick with uh, Richard Linklater. Everything yeah. else is just pure gold. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't. Did you see that movie where uh, it was all the baseball players? Yeah, that was like like the spiritual sequel to Days and Confused. Everybody wants them. That's what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie was okay. I, I didn't love that one. Uh, it was, yeah. It was, okay, it, it, was it, it just didn't really. It, it's like Days and Confused where it doesn't really have a plot. And like, that's kind of, yeah. you know, it's just like. A, you know, this 48 hour period or something. Yeah. Um, not bad. Yeah. Not, uh, probably wouldn't rewatch it. Yeah, wouldn't right, rewatch Days and Confused. Yeah. yeah. Days and Confused classic. I will say this about everybody oh, yeah. wants some. Uh, he, he turned the corner and decided he, he liked having a lot of hot guys in short shorts just hanging out. That seemed to be like Glenn the Powell, point. Hot seemed, dude. Yeah. Seemed, <laughs> very hot dude. And that other guy's like a Kardashian. He's like somehow related to the Kardashians, the main guy in that movie. I'm not sure. This oh, we're yeah. getting and so then, far um, off topic, but you know, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Kurt Russell's sons in that movie. Yeah, there's a bunch of dudes so like oh, uh, yeah. hot dudes in, in the hot pants. Yeah, man. Well, I'm gonna go watch that movie and butts and seats, man. Butts and seats. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of butts, uh, you got to dance with your mom at your wedding. You dance with uh, your mom and your stepmom, which uh, very, very inclusive. Do you remember what song you guys danced to? I, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, it was um, If You Want to Sing Out by Cat Stevens. Um, and that's uh, kind of just Harold and Maude's like one of my mom yeah. and my uh, favorite movies. So it was, it was kind, of, kind of a no brainer, kind of an easy one on that. That's but, awesome. Um, that's awesome. I do remember what your what your guys' first dance was. Uh, yeah, it, it was it was "Kiss Me" by Sixpence, none the richer. And it was. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I've ever told you this, but when that came on, Mal went, 
<laughs> Matt went, is this that Kiss Me song? And I went, <laughs> yes, it's perfect for them. And I was like, I was like crying. <laughs> I was like, it's perfect for them. <laughs> but that's not why oh I bring, God, that's, that's not why I bring this up. What should me and my mom dance to? So I was gonna say if you if you if there is like um I don't know, like something from like a movie or like, you know, something like that that you guys love together and kind of grew up with do that but if not like because it is kind of like a very weird tone yeah, right? of like a mom and son dancing i think you just um i would go with something almost like goofy like a car wash or something <laughs> like that and just and honestly just like learn like a choreographed dance with your mom and then that that's people are gonna go bananas yeah first of all and then also it's just like that's um that's way cooler than just dancing to you know just something nice yeah that's amazing <laughs> you know? I, th- I think we're gonna do uh, you were saying like oh if there's like a thing you and your mom love uh, we would dance to like that the tiger's victory song <laughs> like the we're oh, all yeah. behind our the, baseball the, team baseball. Yeah, yeah. go get them tigers <laughs> like because like that was the only real thing we like let do together but i it's, think it's we're a gonna, tough, I, tough song to dance to but you know it, it could be done <laughs> there's like that old 60s banjo for no reason it's a bit it's like there's all these old <laughs> baseball songs that are really bad like uh the red sox had one that was just about carl yastrzemski and it just goes, Carl, yes, Trepsky. Carl, yes, Trepsky. Carl, yes, Trepsky. The man they call, yes. Like, that's not a good song <laughs> at all. <laughs> I like the Cubs, that Cubs song. I'm I'm sorry, I, I but that Cubs song fucking sucks. It's really bad. But I think all, I think what we're learning here is that most songs about sports teams, not great. So I think you're right on. And I think me and my mom are going to learn a very nice choreographed dance to uh, war. <laughs> what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again, yeah. I don't think it's going to be good. I, like, I think it's going to, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, it's, it's going to awesome. tear it up. I think it's going to be great. I'll say that that is the most innovative, and I, I'm going to go ahead and say I think it's the best answer we've had to that question before. Aaron, do you agree? Agree. Aaron agrees. Aaron usually wears a, a, a hat with a donut on it. No hat today. What's going on? Uh, Doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> When's the divorce final? Doesn't know. <laughs> He'll get in there with that. <laughs> Throughout the course, I throughout the course of the show, Aaron, uh, you know, he's a great man, and we wish him all the luck. And ladies, if you're single out there looking to get uh, a hot podcast producer on the rebound, Aaron, Aaron Lansman at Jazz Fuzz is yeah boy. Look no further. Look, accept no substitute. Don't accept any. The last thing I want the ladies who listen to this podcast to accept is a substitute. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Next question I got. Justin, what's the meaning of life? Go. Don't think about it. Just tell me what it is. Mm, be happy. All right. Fantastic. I'll accept that. <laughs> I Here's my new thing on the show. Uh, I like to ask a little existential question in the middle Ooh, there. Yeah. What about life? The, uh, the Werner Herzog in your childhood. No, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I be your own. go out there, guys. If you're listening, guys, gals, anyone, uh, if you're out there, human beings, go out there and be your own Werner Herzog. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbest thing I've ever said. Uh, we're gonna, wonderful sign off. <laughs> we're gonna get a registry for this stinking thing because that's what you do. Uh, what oh, yeah. should we register for? What would you get us on our registry? And because of friend of the show, Marty Rosa doesn't know what a registry is. And I asked him this question and he just said, ah, we'll go on, uh, we'll go on a wrestling trip. Ah. Experiences can be registered for. <laughs> also, what a, what a spot on Marty impression. That was boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Knocked it out of the park. What should we uh, register for buddy? Ooh, um, oh, I would, I would say just, uh, a couple big things 
that people can kind of go in on together. That's like not something that you're just putting on there to put on there. Okay. Like stuff that's like, oh, like this is like a new couch or like a new I don't know bedroom set or stuff like that that yeah. people can kind of chip in for. Because again, like, like you know, stuff that's just like fifty bucks or stuff like that, where it's like, you know, I don't really need this, but it just, it, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond just suggested it for me. Um, kind of just actually think about if you're actually going to need stuff like that. And also just don't keep the reg- keep the registry kind of short because if there's not, you know, people expect you to have one, but also like, I mean, money is better. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's kind mean, of my like, deal. Yeah. Like, uh, like, I mean, I don't mean to be like shrewd about it, but, um, yeah, it's just, it makes it easier when people just kind of give like, Oh yeah. Like, Money's good. We'll spend this on rent and uh, or like a car payment. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. So, so, like, uh, to a uh, friend of the show, Meredith Catchell, uh, is engaged now. She's in, she's engaged. She just oh, got engaged. Congrats. to her longtime uh, boyfriend, uh, John Michael Osborne. Part of the uh, he's part of the We Still Like You show. And we, me and Mal, were talking today about like, oh, maybe like, what would they? Uh, I, uh, we'll get him like a grill and then mal we were talking for like five minutes about it and then mal just goes hey, we'll just give him money and i was like that's yeah. probably a good point you know they're gonna like it you know yeah. <laughs> like, it fits you know i get it <laughs> yeah like um it's I, I mean i don't don't mean to sound like yeah kind of greedy but it you is, do sound yeah. like everyone can hear the fact that you're we're we're doing this via skype and everyone can hear that you're just doing backstrokes in a pool of gold coins like scrooge I, goddamn duck justin <laughs> we all know you're a monopoly man <laughs> i just have a bathrobe and an ill-fitting monocle yeah. to keep me company <laughs> <laughs> My my wife and not, child not bad life. do not you keep me company. It's just my Roman <laughs> monocle. I let my wife and Matthew, my child tend please to themselves. Run, run along. Yeah. Just, <laughs> this is the time I rub myself with money. Just, um, or sorry, ching ching. Just um, <laughs> ching ching money dollars. <laughs> You every night when you you know how some people have uh they'll they'll do a spa day and they'll put the cucumbers on their eyes. You know, oh yeah, just, uh, the balloons. Yeah, those. Are, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just relax. Go. Mm. Just the Spanish the balloon. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's like some. It's nothing, like something you stole from the count wrinkle, of wrinkles. Yeah, it's like something you stole from the count of Monte Cristo. Like, yeah, just nonsense. <laughs> this really gets rid of my crow's feet. Nothing like just Spanish gold. <laughs> 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 Mm, 16th century. Oh, I guess it'll do. I'm more of a 14th century gay. Oh, you are rich. God, you're so rich up there, living in the middle of the middle of nowhere, still driving a truck from 1996. Oh, yeah. yeah, we still have dollar beers. It's, it's wonderful. It's, uh, um, yeah, so I found out that our um, our favorite haunt in town um just this week they did like a a thing about it brady's bar um a wonderful place apparently was the first boarding house and they said none of it has changed it is exactly (laughs) as it was in like 1900 that's fucking amazing (laughs) wow (laughs) shout out to brady's bar girl that's amazing of all the I'll, i'll if if I if if someone were to press me to make a list of the best dive bars in the Midwest, and if anybody's going to make that list, I really think it should be me. Oh, you're, you're me. I think it should yeah. really be me. Uh, I'd say I'd say Brady's is definitely a top fiver. What a classic shithole! Just fantastic, oh, beautiful. It's the best. There's like velvet paintings of wolves on the wall. It's great. Yeah. There's a lot of like taxidermied fish. And yeah. just like, uh, you know, like the hams for a dollar. They have yeah. like pictures for four. <laughs> like it's Brady's is done. one of the Brady's is one of those bars. And this is one of my favorite things about still doing the road. Uh, every once in a while. And if you were at the shows in Holly, Michigan this weekend, thanks for coming out. We had a, we had a nice time. Uh, is when I go to a smaller town and I'll order a beer and they tell me the price and then 
I have to pretend like what they said didn't just blow my fucking mind. <laughs> like I'll take a little bat blue and they're just like, Oh, that'll be a dollar 50. And I, and then I, as a real person can't go, what are you talking about? <laughs> I demand I pay you more <laughs> for this delicacy. The can, a Canadian beer, you should get at least, you know, a dollar 75, yeah, yeah. 80, you know, <laughs> God damn. You know, with, with the chip, that's two bucks at Oof. least, you know, if not more. <laughs> I throw it on two and I don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah. No, it is It is kind of shocking sometimes being there where it's like, we were here for like four hours. I had this like $30 and it's like, no, they got everything. Like it yeah. was just nothing cost money. Like it was all just. <laughs> I, call um, that a, I call that a Dagwoods. That's a Dagwoods where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Dagwoods. N- another good dive bar. Another, <laughs> another one on the list, baby. Dagwoods. Uh, mm. it, it, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a top seven if you're listening out there. And this won't just be Michigan. This will be all over the place. Uh, you, you, you got Brady's in Traverse city, Michigan. You got Dagwoods, Lansing, Michigan. You got, uh, the eight ball saloon, which is underneath the blind pig, Ann Arbor, Michigan. I'll give you uh, uh why the hell not? I'll give you a Cole's bar here in beautiful Chicago only because the G man is on my shit list right now. I'll give you, <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you Cleo's in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'll give you uh Tony Yarrow's in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I will give you Olivers in Omaha, Nebraska. There you go. <laughs> O'Keefe. And we'll, top, top notch. we'll all, I'll remember when this was in the thing and I'll list it. I'll post the list of the top dive bars in the Midwestern United States. Boy, oh boy, is that going to be a list seen by no one? <laughs> good list it's an inexpensive list list. oh very beautifully yeah oh Oh, man that is uh oh you got twenty dollars in your pocket that is more than enough money (laughs) oh man so the next thing we gotta do we gotta get back on track listen buddy we've well i feel like we've been having the same conversation just ongoing for 10 years we gotta get to the the, fight i can't interview you like i'm uh, like a special bud i gotta interview like like i interview any jerk sitting across from me and make no bones about it my other 49 guests jerks every last one of them (laughs) even now even now (laughs) total jerk uh-huh. Yeah, well, no, grill me. Uh, right. Next Charlie question. Rose. <laughs> Don't call me Charlie Rose. <laughs> call me Charlie There's the thought. Parker, the Birdman, jazz, heroin, full circle. <laughs> the next question I have for you, and just so you know, I am pointing at the other chair in the studio right now like you are across from me. The, my next question for you, who would be your Mount Rushmore of <laughs> groomsmen? And you can't say any of the people who are actually groomsmen in your wedding. So I'm, I'm excluding your brother, John boy, uh, Spags, Morrissey, me, we're not in there. Who, anyone from history or fiction or sports or whatever, who would be your Mount Rushmore of Gramsman? Or groomsmen, whichever one. So this is for for a, a statue or for my, like my fantasy groomsmen, basically. Either one, they can put they can okay. they can put them on a statue. This could be a fantasy draft if you're in a fantasy groomsman league, which I'm sure Yahoo is beta uh, testing right now. <laughs> they're grasping the straws there, but they're yeah. uh, they're, they're doing what they can. Um, Listen, well, first off, I gotta go. My my son, my uh, <laughs> my my sweet baby Frank. Um, either 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 as a groomsman at a wedding. Because a baby groomsman, very yeah. funny, or oh, a baby hilarious. statue. Because there's not a lot of statues of babies. Um, so. there was one, there, when I lived in Belgium, there was one right by my house, and it was a fountain where the baby was pissing. So disgusting. Oh yeah, oh, that's, 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 who doesn't love that statue? It seemed like every I don't know older aunt's backyard kind of <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Well, I, I I lived by the real one, so suck it, every aunt. <laughs> um, okay, so that's uh, that's one. Uh, um, the Earl of Sandwich, Frank. Gow. Number one, number one, Frankie with the bullet. Um, obviously, um, I mean, 
FDR. He was passed over <laughs> on the original. Uh, or no, <laughs> he wasn't president yet. Was the original it, Mount so Rushmore. He's just a guy. He's pretty, pretty attractive. Good, yeah. Good president. Um, good looking guy. Pretty good groomsman. Um, yeah. Oh, um, lazy. Well, not a big walker, but you know. No, no, not a big walker. Liked blankets a lot. <laughs> you know, big, uh, real, real cuddler. Yeah, he was just, like, uh, he was like every girlfriend when the fall comes around. Just blankets. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, couldn't could get in that blanket soon enough. Um, More than made yeah, up for go, it with his him. policies, though. Great policies. <laughs> One of our best presidents, <laughs> a great pick. Number three. Chip chop. Um, let's see. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't want to pander to you because you were in the <laughs> wedding. You're, you're disqualified. Yeah, um, very much. So I, I, I can't. You're, you're a delightful usher at my wedding. Um, <laughs> the ushers you know, ushered each other down the aisle. Not that he's the guest, of course, but. Uh, <laughs> no one was, told us um, where to go. It was a, that thing was a shit show. Oh, no. <laughs> they looked very good doing it. And, um, they did. We, and I, uh, I, I, I don't know if the list, I don't know if I've ever said this on the podcast, but it's, it's in one of my stand up bits. I, before the wedding, I kissed Justin on the lips. So I was Justin's last kiss as a single man. And I I hold that uh, with a point of pride. I'm very proud of that. Um, honestly, we kissed a bunch that day. You we were my, did. like one of my first non kisses. But like, I, honestly, you're probably one of the only people I've kissed besides my wife and like my <laughs> child. <laughs> like, I don't know why I think it's so um, funny. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't know why it's I, funny. I, I, I think it's funny. We've been we've been doing this for a while. Yeah, like, it's like a it's like a very, it's like a five year bit. It's very silly. <laughs> and I, I like I told Roba, I told friend of the you and the show Mark Roebuck about it. And he was like, "That's like cheating, kind of." And I was like, "Ah, shut up! What do you know? You fucking sleepy looking oh, bastard! <laughs> Why don't you go live in the Puritan desert, Roebuck? Come on." Back. <laughs> Go live in the desert, you turd. Get out of here, Marky. Yeah. Yeah. Goofy fundamentalists in the desert, not letting people kiss their friends. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> anyway, what else you got? <laughs> Wait, sorry, what's I up? think we're still on three on your Mount Rushmore. Okay. Yeah, we're still on three. We got FDR and my son, Frankie. Um, so um, let's see. Um, you know, obviously, I. I don't just from a pure energy standpoint, um, Danny McBride, okay. I feel like he, you know, bride similar to weddings. <laughs> um, also he, dude, dude can dance. Um, he's I feel like he could be dancing and, um, he's a dancer, yeah, kind of, kind of like a one man party because magnitude is pop. a fictional character pop. that we, we could not <laughs> pop, 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 I don't know if I told you this, but I did. I did a show in Milwaukee uh, a couple weeks ago, and I did uh, my. I have a. I have a bit where I talk about ROTC and the way you shoot your fake gun in ROTC is by saying "pop pop." And when I said <laughs> when I did that line, the, a bunch of people in the crowd did like the magnitude raise the roof pop pop thing. <laughs> it was like this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. And then I realized it was because they started comedy in Milwaukee a million years ago with Dan Harmon. Full circle. That's insane. Dude, that's, that's honestly, like, I, all you can do is kind of just, like, laugh and just be like, holy shit, like, this world. is happening. Yeah, <laughs> no, um, no, that's, that's kind of great. Um, Who's your last okay. one, though? Who's your last one on? Up last there? one. Um, either, I don't know. Cast of the movie Rushmore or Crazy Horse, you know it's real toss up between those two. Um, really, that statue needs to get done of him, and you know, but Jason Schwartzman is a uh, charmer as always. Okay, so we'll put we'll put Jason Schwartzman up there. He's number four. That sounds good. The former Phantom Planet drummer and the yeah the Coconut Records something. <laughs> he's doing his thing. All right, I like it. This has been fantastic. I think you've been you've been, and I'm going to say this. Very good so far on this. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I am the place. I know. I know. And you came in here. People, people are like, oh, blah, 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 blah. no, he's going to bring it. I don't know who these people are who don't know English or how to form words, but you're, you're silencing them. But right now. I'm, I'm doing, we're trying. 
We're, we're doing our best. But right now, it's time for the ASMR Minute. Justin, if you could join me down here in this register. And if you have anything around you that you can that can make noises into the, the your speaking apparatus, go ahead and make those now. We'll do a little ASMR, okay? How's that sound, buddy? That was the ASMR minute. Good stuff. Good stuff. Beautiful. Good stuff. Please talk in a regular voice again. It's weird if you do. <laughs> no, sorry, it's just uh, something stuck in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin, this has been uh, this has been truly lovely. We got one more thing for you to do though, and it's the biggest okay. thing. It's the biggest part. It's the most important aspect of this whole process. It is. It is where, in my opinion. The rubber meets the road. It's where we separate the baloney boys from the baloney not boys. It's time right now for you to do my best man speech. I'm going to make a noise, a clinking glass noise into the microphone. After that goes, it's all it's all you, baby. Whatever you feel, whatever you got in your, your, your big old heart of yours with its ventricles and its chambers and its tubes – and it's capacity for love. All right, so here we go. Oh, thank you, everybody. I um, I know what you're all thinking. Uh, please, I I hope he doesn't sing. Um, <laughs> uh, um I want to thank uh, Mel's maid of honor. I'm sorry. I forgot your name and it's been said so many times tonight already. And it's embarrassing to ask now, but your speech was beautiful. A lot of plugs for your Instagram and uh, <laughs> weird eugenics argument. Didn't really think this was the place, but you know, just strange. Um, you know, love, love is, love is weird. <laughs> and, um, you know, I guess that's what you feel in your heart, but uh Mike and Mel, I, uh, I've known I've known Mike for a decade. Uh, when I first met him, uh, we were not in film class, but actually at uh, a now defunct comedy club for <laughs> open mic. I, uh, yeah, it was my first time on stage, so I went up to him um, thinking that this, you know, we were both 20 at the time, but thinking that this 35-year-old would have some wisdom for me. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he did not, but uh, we, we were many <laughs> friends. <laughs> and, uh, and, and just, you know, we've been together like for 10 years. Um, I'm really, uh, when I when he met Mal, um, everything basically had changed. I'd never seen him, you know, the, the way he, you know, basically 
moved in with her almost immediately. Uh, <laughs> <she> had, <laughs> and, um, you know, together they, um, they finish each other's sandwiches. They finish each other's, um, everything. And, you know, in the words of Mike's favorite New Jersey rocker, I mean, this is life. It's, it's now or never because we're not going to live forever. <laughs> um, you, just, you just have to live, you know, when you're alive. So if you all raise a glass, I mean, it's, it's Mike and Mel's life. <laughs> what a dickhead. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly. I will, I will spell the name of uh, the, the comedy club uh, we met at connections. Uh, K O N N X T I O N Z connections. <laughs> Uh, that was fantastic, buddy. Uh, I, oh, thanks, man. I will 100% guarantee you that Mal's maid of honor, probably going to be your sister, will not shut up about eugenics, which is, of course, the study <laughs> of the career of Eugene Levy. She loves him. She goes, well, oh, she, every time... They every keep ta- making those American Pie movies. <laughs> <laughs> every time we're at dinner with Kim Bradford, she looks at a pie and says, oh, we'll just tell your mother we ate it all. And it's amazing. <laughs> I laugh every time. <laughs> Like, remember me on SCTV? And I go, Kimberly, you're not Eugene Levy. Shut up. <laughs> a weird. She's going to listen to this, too. She's a big fan. I uh, love you, Kimmy. Anyway. Big, big lovey hood. It's time for the love to meet judgment. Ooh. Time for me to bring down my ruling from on high. And on this, the 50th episode of my beloved buddy of the groom, the search for multiple idiots available wherever podcasts are sold. Yeah. I'll do a plug at, of my own podcast at minute 58 <laughs> of my podcast. That seems pertinent, <laughs> but enough of the jibber jabber and the jabber jabber and the ching chong dollar buccarinos. Justin Albert Gowell. The biggest jag I know. I bring down my ruling from on high, and I rule that in the case of Justin Gowell versus Baloney Boys, we did it. It's our first real Baloney Boy. We did it. Hey! Episode 50. Hey! Justin did, everybody. We did it. Oh, my oh, God. Love you, buddy. First. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it would be weird if I was in yours and you didn't have, you know. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but make it real I, for I the podcast. I, I love you, you buddy. <laughs> I love you too, man. I, I, I'm sorry. I forced your hand on this, but yeah. <laughs> the quid pro quo never dies, my friend. <laughs> oh, uh, that man. Was, uh, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for doing dude, the show. Uh, you're the f- Usually I would ask the guests if they had anything to plug. But uh, you you got out of the game a while ago, right? No, yeah, yeah. You got like a Twitter that's basically like a like a looking at like a ghost town of <laughs> like where, where where things used to be. Yeah. And, um, I'll tell you what. Follow yeah. uh, follow Snake Bro. Let's plug Snake Bro. Oh yeah, Snake Bro. I, I do. I do still write on my. Well, just justingowl dot com. Oh yeah, you still have the blog. Never mind, justingowl dot com. He's a fantastic writer. He, one of the, uh, I'll say it, uh, a hilarious writer. Uh, as far as like essay stuff goes, he's one of the funniest out there. And I think you heard, uh, I think you heard uh, today, one of, uh, just a hilariously funny man, and uh, one of my best friends. Uh, happy to say it every time. Uh, we're gonna miss you this weekend, buddy. But uh, I get it, and I love you. <laughs> Uh, hang on the phone for too. a second after I wrap this thing up and uh, I'll give you a proper goodbye. Uh, but Justin, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the baloney boy kingdom. I love it. it yeah, proud to be a baloney boy. It is yours. The walls are salty and the floor is actually Our made of wax. <laughs> baloney stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The price is right. <laughs> <laughs> for uh for the clan Gowl, for Justin, for Sam, for Frankie, for Aaron over at Jazz Fuzz, uh, my name's Mike O'Keefe. Till death do us farts. See you later.